uh, welcoming everybody slowly. I'm, I'm happy to have everybody back for our first lecture of the year, 2023. I'm very happy to continue our adventures in the other world in program. Uh, and today I'm, I'm really happy to introduce you one song. I consider you one one of the most interesting and challenging web designers working today, pushing the limits of what is possible in the medium with an unconventional and subversive language. Songs, works, alludes, and questions standard procedures of the web, providing a ludic and critical vision of the digital environment. Her works span the virtual and digital haptic possibilities of informational exchange, offering the new possible scenarios of the collision of the virtual and physical. So I'm, I'm really happy to introduce you one song to the Fabrica community and really thank her for accepting our invitations to give this important lecture for all our uh, residents and all our international community who are uh, today in our, in, lecture special first lecture of 2023 so you want thank you very much for for these and and welcome to our community thank you so much thank you so much for having me um today i'm really glad to be here um let me first share my screen share screen keynote optimize for the clip then share and yeah, very nice to meet you all. Um, my name is Yeo Hwan Sung. I am a web artist and a designer from Korea, but I'm currently in Switzerland. So I'm in the same time zone as well. Um, and today I'm I am gonna like introduce some of my work and the thoughts that I'm do that I have like and, and the research that I'm doing while I'm working on the project and would love to like talk further through the QA session as well too. Um so I do a lot with the web. I, I define myself as a web net artist and web designer and web developer as well. And I like, I guess like uh, since six, five, six years ago, I've been really fascinated in this like uh, internet world, you know, the web and the web code, all the kind of stuff. Um, at that time, like, uh, I guess like uh, six years ago, I took a workshop from Olia Lialina. She's a um, web artist, um, um, one of the most famous web artists as well. And she, I, I participated in her workshop. And the first question that she gave to us was that, do you know the difference between the internet and the web? And that was like, um, at that time, I wasn't interested in internet at all. Like internet is something that we always have, like the internet connection is just something that is annoying when we have like a slow internet, but I wasn't really interested in like all the details of that. But that was like the first time that I started to really think about the terms that we use when we are dealing with the internet and the like web and all this kind of technology. And I remember when she's defining the difference between the internet and the web or website is that it's more like a train rail or a railroad that the internet is connecting all the websites. But uh, on the like on the station of the of this like a train rail, there is like an internet. So like internet is uh, there is a website. So internet is, is connecting all the website, and then the ending point of this connection is the website. And behind that, there is a user who are using the website to enter the database of, of the internet. So that was like a really basic, um, um, like um, basic structure of the internet and the website. And I, I kind of felt like I, it, this is really fascinating to know about these details of the technology. Um, and it was like pretty surprising to me to know that I was so naive when I'm dealing with this technology, even though I'm using this in, in my daily life. And like after that, I've been working as a like I've been learning and working as a web developer and designer, and I've been like interested in how the web code works and all that kind of like a technical part of it. But at the same time, I feel like I kind of felt like very lost and very isolated whenever I try to learn more. Like when people are talking about like a web three or a blockchain or NFT, I kind of feel like 
like still like even though I have like an understanding and a knowledge of all this technology I still feel like so isolated and so lonely when I'm in in the middle of that conversation and um, I'm I've been trying to like figure out what is the trigger that makes me this kind of like um um depression and I just realized that one of that is that I'm not like a hundred percent developer, but I'm a designer and a developer. So I'm the person who is in between non-developer and the developer. So I know that non-developers are very naive and they are dealing with the technology and they have like a non-understanding. So when developers are talking about this distributed web and then the future of the web and all this kind of technology that makes people like free to use their data and et cetera, um, non-developers have no idea, like no understanding how it works. So it doesn't really touch or move the way people think when they are they when they have no knowledge about the development. And at the same time, another part that really makes me feel isolated is that like I'm not using Latin language um, or English as a first language. I'm from Korea. So like I'm kind of like this, there's like a two-step of abstraction because like all the most of the code language or the computer language is written in English or written in Latin language. I need to like change my language into this Latin language first and then convert it into the computer language whenever I need to write the code. So there's like an abstraction um, and then the distance between these technology that are originally coming from, you know, the United States or the Western cultures. And for me, like understanding and like converting all my languages into this, feeding my language into this uh, internet world, is kind of like makes make me feel like isolated from the all this technology. And then the same thing applies to like like for all of us as well too. I guess like when you are making like on you know like a new website, for example, all the domain names should be written in Latin, basic English or Latin language, and because of that. Um, you know, like you need to make an uh, Instagram account, for example, in the English and Latin language as well, too. So there is like, um, you know, even though you feel like Internet is technically connecting all the world and really fair, giving us like a fair environment for us to understand the world and communicate with the people for a second who otherwise would be would not be able to meet at all. Like there is obviously a power structure and unfairness happening in the internet. And I kind of feel like that's something that I need to focus as well too. Like as a person who have understanding and the user of this web, I need to like understand this structure and the differences of the environment based on their culture and background when they're dealing with the website. And I need to talk about this as an artist and, and, and the artist practice, artist practice as well too. So that was a reason why I've been very much interested in not only the technical part of the internet or the power of the internet, but more about the people in the physical world and then the intersection between the people and the virtual or the internet world. So that's the, the place where people meet the internet, which is the website that people enter. So I'm, I've been really fascinated in the interaction or the intersection between the user and then the devices. So um, when I call it like a circulation, I kind of, the Im immediate uh, image that come up to my mind is this image. Um, you might have like um, learned about this at one point in your life, maybe in the elementary school, that the circulation of the water, you know, like when there's like a rain, then the rain comes from the sky and it goes to the ground. And then the water water goes to the river and river goes to the flight to the um ocean and then it evaporates and makes a cloud and then it rains again. This kind of like a like um dy dynamic input and output and circulation of the water is something that I imagine whenever I'm making like an um, interactive project. I want this sort of circulation happening between the people, the user and the web or the internet. So like between the device that people use, there should be like a circulation when user do something, that kind of gesture um, inspire or trigger something inside the screen. And then that's emotions trigger user to feel something by like watching the watching it that were triggered by the user's gesture. That was something that I wanted to achieve 
as a um, web artist. And this kind of like a dynamic circulation should be um, diverse and different um, because I think that there are like a huge limitation of the the way user uses the web and the internet. As I mentioned, I feel like very isolated and the internet is very like Western culture or very like have this kind of like a power structure. And in order to break that kind of power structure, I think we should talk about the diversity of the real world or the real physical world and then apply that into the in internet world as well too. That's why I, I've been really focusing on like a diverse or diverse way the user uses the device or user uses the website and different way of like uh, presenting information in the website, different um, web template or different interaction or user UX design. So as I mentioned, I think that like it's just that I'm focusing on the circulation between this physical space and the web or the digital space. Um, and like I'm really focusing on this dotted, dotted line on the center, the intersection between two different spaces. But I think that right now we only have like a very limited um, um, way that physical space and the web space is interacting. For example, we only use a, like a smartphone or the desktop to enter the website. And we only use like a very limited gesture when we are using these devices. For example, we don't just touch or swipe to like interact with this, all these devices and all the information. And then the information in the website is always following this web template and web um structure that we call a user-friendly design and I wanted to change that and I wanted to talk about like a different way of using these devices. So I'm trying to make like a lot of different way that user communicate or the like a circulation between the physical space and the web. So I, I've been really focusing on the um, works on um, my work is very much focusing on this this whole area some of them are much focused on the like an intersection between the physical and the web space some of them are more focused on the web itself like web design and web template design and and some of them are focusing on the how can I present the web in the physical space so that one is more focused on the physical space and I'm gonna share um these three different category of the works today and we'll start with this um center points the intersection between the web and the physical space and as I mentioned we only have like a limited way that people interact with the website and we call it as a user-friendly web design you know like we touch and swipe the website. And that's like all the interaction that we do using the touch screen where we just type using the keyboard or using this like a conventional mouse to use the website. But if you think about this, like all these devices that we use, like there is like a web camera, there's like a mic input and touch screen can actually like understand so many different inputs from the users. If you really think about it, there are so many different ways to like make an interaction, make a circulation between the web and the physical space. So, you know, I've been like trying to make like a lot of different example of using these devices and make a different interactions. Um, so like some of them are ended up more like a performance work of the web and some of them are really became like a user interaction, user interface design. But most of them, all of them are very much focusing on how can I like change the way people use the device and how can I let people know that there is different way of using um, web device, or using the devices and different interaction between the web and the users. So like, for example, this one, I use it, the um, screen, and it's kind of like recording myself. I'm um, using the webcam and it detects the finger point and the eye point. So it makes this kind of pop-ups um, whenever I touch my finger to the, with the, um, touch my eyes with my finger. Or yeah, it's not really about if it's, um, useful or usable or not, but it's more about like more like a performance to let people know like, you know, we can do this, we can use it in a different way. And you are the way you think about the internet is very much limited. So um, this one, 
um, is the, this is the mobile website that interact with them lips. Or you can also walk on the screen. I made it in the middle of COVID um, when we all were like um, um, quarantined in our each of our home and I just wanted to take a walk outside. So I made this um, website that I can at least walk with my finger. And you know, like if you use your mobile device outside um, when there's when when it's raining, then you can feel like we can feel that the touch screen actually react with the waters as well, because a touch screen react with the electronic um energy and the water can contain the electronic energy as well too. So like from that uh, like a realization, I was able to create this kind of piece that I pour the water on the top of the touch screen and then the touch screen um, detects it as a touch finger, finger point and create this um, 3D object, 3D um, object in a real time, as you can see on the right bottom side of the screen. And I was able to create this sort of like a virtual sculpture um, eventually. This uh, uses the same feature that the touch screen reacts with the water touch, like water power. And this one, I use it the water gun. And I was able to like print it out with using the 3D printer as well. So like all of this work is kind of like us paradising the way that the device or all these companies kind of like limit the way we think interacting with these devices. Um, this one called, um, this art piece is called very responsive. Um, coming from the responsive design that, you know, like, you know, the responsive design is the design strategy that you need to keep the same design shape, even though you just change the screen ratio. But if you rethink about that, that's kind of, that's quite weird that, you know, like when we are designing the print or editorial design, we are really sensitive about the uh, pay, paper ratio and et cetera. But when it comes to like a website, people try to keep the same design whenever you, even though you just change the um, ratio of the screen. And I wanted to like criticize that by making this very responsive website that distorts the image whenever you just change the screen ratio. This one was the very first piece, piece when I'm starting this um, project, anti-friendly. Anti and this website is activated when user touches the first screen on the first finger on the screen, and then the content shows below the finger. So in order to like activate and read the content, you need to kind of like rotate the device like this person here. You know, many of these are more like, again, many of these are more like a performance. And this one coming from like a finger tapping gesture that you, like you might have one of your friends doing this whenever they talk, try to talk to you, you know, like just tapping the table, which is pretty annoying. And I just um, made this um, website using from that um, observation. observation. This one is called Don't Touch the Touch Screen. And as you can see that I'm kind of, this is my face and I'm kind of like running away from the touch screen when you just try to touch the touch screen. And this is another piece that I made during the COVID with my friend who used to be in Canada at the time. And I was in Seoul, Korea. And we tried, we wanted to make this kind of like a virtual touch um, using mobile devices. So we connected these two different websites in a real time. So when one, per, one user touches the screen using their finger, this virtual finger shows up to the other user's device so then we can kind of like um, touch each other in real time and at that time it was pretty beautiful for us to like feel like we are touching each other 
um, even though we are, you know, such a far distance. And I turn off the sound of this piece, but this is like an um, audio reactive um, website. And this is some um, this walking gesture in a desktop version on the keyboard. This one is called Mountain Everest Scroll Bar because the scroll bar looks like a Mountain Everest. And obviously this is really useless, but again, it's more like a gesture um, of how can we use these conventional devices or user interface in a different way. And for this piece and some of those other pieces that I'm gonna share is about like making like a small, like a village wide uh, web uh, connection um, using different devices. So it, all of these three websites are the different website, but they are connected um, in the same database and they are sharing the data in real time. So like when I'm scrolling one page of this, um, it actually like react triggers all the scroll of all these different uh, websites. And I kind of like felt like I wanted to make this because like all the screens are flat and very flat and very like two dimensional. And I wanted to make this um not a fake 3D website, but really like a 3D structure using different devices. And this piece is called Aquarium. And again, for different devices. You know, the um, when it comes to the mobile device, um, the one of the most fascinating part is part of it is that you can just move it around and locate it in a different angle and different direction. So, like for example, you can just put it on the ceiling and make it as like a um like a sky and make some conductive um paper flight, paper plane, plane, paper plane, plane, and then make it like interactive with the with these tools. I've been really interested in making web toys or web tools using conductive materials. Cause I again I I like love making something actually 3D structure. Um, that's something like that comes from my like personal taste. But also like this flat screen works really well with when it comes to when it combines with the 3D structure. And I also think that you know the way we interact with the, this device is really limited. And if I bring some 3D object like a third party object on the top of this web interaction, that might trigger people to rethink about the interaction as well. Too. So these three um, wooden sticks are have this conductive tape behind. And once I touch the screen using this wooden stick, then the screen reacts um, as if like I'm touching the screen directly with my finger. And this makes this sort of like um, um, 3D um, letters. And I love working with the typography as well too, because I, first of all, my background is graphic design. So that's very much influenced the, my personal taste of this typography and then the black and white. But also like, I love the, this kind of like an intersection between readable and unreadable. So before I touch the screen, the wooden stick itself is unreadable, but once I touch the screen, it converts it into the readable stage, which is really fascinating as well. You know, all these sort of experiments using conductive um, objects and combining it into the website and the touch screen. I guess like actually like touch screen itself have this all the like detailed code that blocks third party interaction, you know, like when Apple makes these devices, they intentionally like make this 
so then it doesn't react with the water or with the this like random touch uh, random conductive materials and for me like my job is kind of like break that and find some materials or find some stage that react make it react with the third party objects so like there has been like a lot of research on this. And like, if I make like a hundred example, then like a 10 of them is only working and then the others are not working. So like these, these are the ones that are working, but there has been lots of examples that are, I failed to make it interactive. But this is the mobile version of it. Um, another web toy I call it sorter. Sorter. So once I touch the screen using this device, um, then it sorts the icons based on the color. And also this one I use it the joystick, and connect it in with the conductive um tape as you can see on the middle. And again, I play with this um, readable and unreadable stage of the typography. This is the web recording um, of my online solo show in Distant Gallery. And for when I'm making this website, I made this Twitch live stream on the background um, with a really zoomed in view of um, Twitch live stream. And like it record my face or the user's face in front of the device um, at the same time. So when user is using this website, when user is um, looking into the website, the giant's face of herself or himself shows up on the background as if this giant um, monster is looking at the website at the same time. And I kind of like try this uh, in a different way to invite the user in the space. So those are the examples of me making, trying to make change the way user interact with these websites. So that one is very much about the intersection between the web and the physical space. So that one is the example of the anti-friendly um, projects that I've been working on. And from now on, I wanna share some example of um, the project called Narrative Architecture, which is very much focused on the web um, when I categorize um, three different projects based on this um, diagram. And I'm, cause like these examples are the web, actual website. I would love to just share the, um, Chrome browser, like a website itself. Um, more share screen. Share. So yeah, these are the series of the website that I created and I call it like a narrative architecture because I'm just gonna share, change the screen ratio. I call it narrative architecture because like, as you can see, um, all of this um, website has this kind of like an architecture shape. So I been felt like very frustrating as I'm working as working as a web designer because like I feel like even though I call myself as a designer, all the websites are follow are forced to follow this kind of like a conventional web template. I kind of feel like I'm repeating the same conventional stuff rather than like designing something creative. So I feel like I I've been rethinking about why do we follow this um web template and what does that mean to follow the web template? Because like when I'm designing the you know the editorial stuff like a books or the posters, all the like a structures or and the layouts are coming from the content structure. But the web, but when it comes to the website, we just reuse the same structure and put a different just to just change the color and the logo and put the different um content in into this um conventional web um templates. So I wanted to change that um tradition of the web design, and I wanted to make this a website that has this architecture shape coming from the content structure that it contains. So each of this architecture shape represent the content structure. For example, this is the website for that I made for the Istanbul Biennial. Um, and you can actually zoom out this website. This website has this kind of like a spiral um, structure, as you can see. Um, and 
for this biannual, I made this website that can compose this content, the contents um, based on the timeline. So those, um, I, I started, so the biannual was in September, but I started to make this and run this website from April this year, April last year. And at the same, at the first time when we are starting this website, I started with a very few content. So I only have like a two different layers on the website. But every week I edit the new content on the website and let the website make a new layer based on the amount of the content that it contains. So this like amount of layer represent the time that these websites um, are alive or born <laughs> since April. And then every week, as you can see that the new layers are being added since new contents are being added on this website. And you can zoom in and click one of them to go to the external um, link, but I'm not gonna play this video. So go back to the original website. Mm, yeah. And from Zoom, as you can see that, like we ended up having too many contents than I thought. So we ended up having so many different layers um, on the website. But as you can see, as time goes, you can see the new layers are being added and that uh, represent the content on uh, the amount of the content of this website. And the, and the main theme of this biannual was about the compost. So I wanted to make this website that like structurally represent the term compost by like showing the amount of the content um, archived in this website. Um, this is the website that I made with uh, Lima Media Art Museum in Amsterdam. And for this website, um, this is a website to archive the digital art from 1960 to 2000. And as you can see, like um, I made this also, the, the Lima Art Museum wanted to make this website to archive all the shows and all the artists that they presented in their museum so far. So I made this website that archive all the artwork. But at the same time, Lima Art Museum wanted to talk about the curatorial background of this. So why did they select this, this artist and why did they make this show and etc. So there is like a two different information. One is the archive of the artwork, but the other part of it is more about like a curatorial background. So I made this website rotatable. So on the front page, on the landing page, user can kind of like navigate this page um, and click one of them and read the artist information and the artwork information. But at the same time, they can rotate the website and read about the background or backstory of this curation or this artwork. And there's like a small site map, which you can rotate. And this is my favorite page of this website. So, um, we don't have that much time. So, <laughs> this is a website for the architecture in summer school. And I just made this website that is um, where once you you can just drag and like click one of them and read the content as a as if you are interacting with the conventional website. But you can also um, drag the screen and see the like a 3D structure that is hidden behind the website. And since I'm like making this website as a 3D structure, I was able to play with the three different face. So first, like a landing page, the front page has the English content, and then the side view has the Korean content. And on the top, I just put like a poster of this event. Mm, I we don't have that much time, so I'll just go back to the um the presentation share screen per keynote. And this one is another website that I wanted to share, but right before I checked, it doesn't work um online, so I just want to share the 
on video of this website, but I use it on this is the archive website of the summer school. Um, and I use it like a huge 3D um, cylinder on the landing page. And the slices view shows the preview of the um, summer school output. So user can track as if they are navigating the web map and then see the preview of them. And then the rounded side represent the year of the content. So user can click one of the years that they want to navigate and then the scroll the slices side of it. So all this kind of like an architecture website are like just it's not really about like on data like data visualization, but it's more about like creating a narration coming from the uh, content structure. So I'm I kind of feel like while I'm working on this project, I feel like I'm curating the content and making a new storytelling coming from the content rather than you know like um, purely showing the data structure in the website. So I'm gonna just make it faster for the other slides. Um, so that one was a narrative a series of the narrative architecture website that I've been created. And at the same time, I do this like a project or a small workshop with the participants on regularly um, to create this uh, 3D space, which I call it as a collective web. So I make this workshop and make this like, um, um, you know, the software that could make user make like a Lot, uh, make like a 30 or 40 participants um, can create the website simultaneously, um, collectively and simultaneously. So in order to do that, I used the Google spreadsheet and um, made this code that convert the Google spreadsheet into the 3D space. So main theme of this workshop is really about, um, you know, like we are, you are the user of the website, but now these days, website is something that only developers can develop, and user is just a user who can just who just use the website. And I just wanted to change this, change the structure. So I made this workshop that um, people user can collectively build a website and use the website eventually. So here you can see the recording of the um, 30 participants invited into this, this Google spreadsheet and changing the Google spreadsheet in simultaneously. And in, these are the output of the Google spreadsheet. And um, this is the um, final 3D view of this um, website that convert that were converted from the Google spreadsheet. Um, so eventually this is the website that were built by 30 different participants of the workshop. So again, um, this is more like a gesture that we need to like overcome the gap between developer and non-developer and the user and the pure user and the developer or the, those who understand the technology and those who have their own job and have like a less understanding of the technology, for example. So those are the example of this creating this website that are not following the conventional web structure, but has this own structure that represent the content structure. Um, and that those are the project that I call narrative architecture. And lastly, and shortly, I wanna share the third part of this um, category, which is um, installation of this website. So like, Again, I've been really interested in, I've been really like frustrated to see how the internet and this whole the utopia, technological utopia is kind of like ignoring what is really happening in the physical space. You know, we think that World Wide Web is connecting the entire world, but actually if you look into how many people are using the internet, it's only about like a 60% of the world. So the World Wide Web is actually like ignoring the 30% of the people in the world. And that kind like um, the gap between this utopian space and the actual space um, is really frustrating and I wanted to create this different way of like projecting the internet in the physical space to overcome the gap between the physical and the digital and like the creating different um, circulation between the two different spaces. So this one is the installation that I did last year. Um, the original website is a website with a bunch of different pop-ups and I just made this kind of like um, um, structure 
So then the website is not just projected on the like uh, flat screen, but projected on the top of the structure. And you can see this small mouse is running around, um, rotating the same, um, same social bubble. You know, all this kind of like um, um, structures um, that I made um, using different um, way of like a projecting the website in a physical space. It's, I, I think that this part is very much something that I'm still working on and not finished yet, but I'm trying to make a different, think about different way of like combining the physical space or installing the website in a physical space in a different way. And this is the last project that I want to share, um, which is, this is something that I just made for fun, but this is called web surfing. And you can see the website are surfing around. Yes, and this is the last slide um, of the presentation. Thank you. Well, uh, I think that our time is running out. I, I really wanted to thank you again run for your time, for your fantastic lecture. And also happy that now we can uh, welcome you to our community. And hopefully we will we'll meet uh, in person soon in the next coming months, hopefully when you come back maybe to Venice or whatever you are always welcome. And I really thank you again for, for your time and watching. Thank you. Thank you so much again for having me. And it was so fun to be here. Thank yeah. you.